one of you read the if we take up the analogy he has dealt with the dream image now he is taking the analogy of the hallucination hallucination he is particularly mentioned he is uh, referring to the snake the rope with the snake it's a hallucination okay so let us read the para and then we'll come back to it okay ranga dal read later on then i can go ahead if if we take up the analogy of hallucination we find it hardly more helpful for a true understanding of the theory of cosmic illusion than the dream analogy hallucinations are of two kinds mental or ideative and visual or in some way sensory when we see an image of things where those things are not it is an erroneous construction of the senses a visual hallucination when we take for an objective fact a thing which is a subjective structure of the mind a constructive mental error or an objectivized imagination or a misplaced mental image image it is a mental hallucination an example of the first is the mirage an example of the second is the classic instance of a rope taken for a snake in passing way in passing we may note that there are many things called hallucinations which are not really that but symbol images sent up from the subliminal or experiences in which the subliminal consciousness or sense comes to the surface and puts us into contact with supra physical realities thus the cosmic consciousness which is our entry by a breaking down of our mental limitations into the sense of a vast reality has been classed even in admitting it as a hallucination but taking only the common hallucination mental or visual we observe that it seems to be at first sight a true example of what is called imposition in the philosophic theory it is the placement of an unreal figure of thing on a reality of a mirage upon the bare desert air of the figures of a non present snake on the present and real rope the world we may contend is such a hallucination an imposition of a non existent unreal figure of thing on the bare ever present soul reality of the brahman but then we note that in each case the hallucination the false image is not of something quite non existent it is an image of sub- something existent and real but not present in the place on which it has been imposed by the mind's error or by a sense error a mirage is the image of a city an oasis running water or of other absent things and if these things did not exist the false image of them whether raised up by the mind or reflected in the desert air would not be there to delude the mind with a false sense of reality a snake exists and its its existence and form are known to known to the victim of the momentary hallucination if it had not been so the le- the delusion would not have been created for it is a form resemblance of the seen reality to another reality previously known elsewhere that is the origin of the error the analogy therefore is unhelpful it would be valid only if our image of the universe <coughs> were a falsity reflecting a true universe which is not here but elsewhere or else if it were a false image manifestation of the reality replacing in the mind or covering with its distorted resemblance a true manifestation but here the world is a non existent form of thing an illusory construction imposed on the bare reality on the soul existent which is forever empty of things and formless there would be a true analogy analogy only if a vision constructed in the void air of the desert a figure of things that exist nowhere or else if it imposed on a bare ground both rope and snake and other figures that equally existed nowhere oh. huh? and he is telling you that hallucination is of two types he is telling you first the snake and the rope and also the desert image the mirage okay, so now we will take up both in the case of the snake and the rope the rope is real 
and the snake also exists in the physical world but you are mistaking one for the other okay that's one that is it's a, a mistake of the senses but the other one something in the desert it does not exist okay so it is not there but you are seeing it so there are two types what he is saying hallucination is of two types one is you are imagining something which is not there and the other is as i said there is a cat sitting but you take it to be a tiger or a dog okay there is a difference between the two so the both the hallucinations and then he is discussing further taking the image of the heli uh, the desert image okay the desert you are seeing the uh, trees and the oasis you are seeing but the is it an absolutely because is it absolutely unreality if the oasis exists somewhere <laughs> that it does exist so you are only imagining something that exists which is not there immediately at present so these are the two types of imaginations uh, hallucinations which you are talking about now he is saying that hallucination by the way also is it is mistaken sometimes those who are having spiritual experiences or they are seeing a reality certain realities in the west they think that they have gone mad okay this is a thing okay. i am seeing subtle forms but those who don't see subtle forms think that you are talking nonsense and you are mad and they actually take the trouble of putting him in the mental asylum this has happened in the past in in europe <clears throat> but in in uh, in india it's not like that we know that subtle reality exists so these are the two types he is discussing and the mayavada is saying the mayavada is saying that what you are seeing exists nowhere and you are seeing something you are building up something which exists nowhere okay and this is uh, this, so that is the it's inapplicable because both the snake and the rope exist somewhere even the ex- oasis exists somewhere but the mayavada is the theory of, if you take that as the absolute mayavadi the absolute mayavada theory is you are seeing something which is totally non existent it is not that you are seeing something which exists somewhere but not here what you are seeing so these are the two types of uh, things that you are seeing or to put it in different words i am seeing something which really does not exist anywhere in the universe this number one and the other one is i am seeing something else okay so these are the two types of things but the mahabharata theory says that you are seeing something which does not exist anywhere at all if you take it in the absolute sense of mahabharata and buddhism so rather it's actually a construction uh, it's a uh, the later people who came said that but when you have the experience of the self it is not like that <coughs> you see the forms which do exist somewhere what he is discussing and we'll go into each sentence carefully and see what he is saying quite big huh? but basically this is what he is saying if we take up i'm reading each sentence if we take up the analogy of hallucination we find it hard more helpful for a true understanding of the theory of cosmic illusion than the dream analogy both non Lot of noise coming from here. <laughs> okay, so if this is what he is saying, illusion then the dream. Hallucinations are of two kinds. Okay, so and visual or in some way sensory. So one is based on the senses, and the other is uh, mental. The mental or constructing a mental image of the oasis in the desert, which does not exist anywhere. It is not a question of senses. senses are giving you data of vibrations on the floor of the desert but you are constructing something mentally that's one type of hallucination the type of hallucination is there is the rope and the rope is real and you are touching it and you think it's a snake it's a sense your senses are giving you wrong data okay so one is sense and the other is mental the mental one is you are imagining it is not there at all but something that really does not exist anywhere so they saying that no it's not like that 
it is that the oasis exists somewhere but you are imposing the ex- oasis where there is no oasis at all so very clear na the two images and my father philosophy is say that you are imagining something which really does not exist anywhere this is my father theory so the image is not applicable the analogy is not applicable that's what is hallucinations are of two kinds mental or ideative and visual or in some way sensory based on the senses right so the difference between the two is clear okay there is a reality but you are seeing something else the other is there and you are seeing something that's a mental one and this is the wrong interpretation of the senses okay now he is explaining when we see an image of things where those things are not it is an er- erroneous construction of the senses a visual hallucination when we take for an objective fact a thing which is the structure of the mind a constructive mental error or an objectivized imagination or a misplaced mental image it's a mental hallucination the mental hallucinations can come from several things he is uh, telling you what they are subjective structure of the mind because you can think of so many things i'm sitting here now but i can think of a tiger but the tiger doesn't exist anywhere but if i think that that's real then it's a hallucination a or a constructive mental error okay that also can be there <coughs> i am imagining something in my mind which does not correspond to facts or objectivized imagination an imagination in your mind which you think is real in the physical world that's another type okay an objectivized mental uh, misplaced mental image it's a mental mental hallucination very clearly the example is the mirage in the for in the desert there is no mirage there is no flowing water and there is something vibrations are there but you are misinterpreting them altogether so shrendra is saying that the first the mental hallucination you are imagining something which is not really there the other one is it does exist the rope is there in the ground and when you touch it you think it's a snake so both are existing in the other one it does not exist there and yet you are imagining that it is there both these things he says are not applicable because in the mayavada theory you are seeing something when you go to the self you are seeing the world as images and you are seeing these images but they have some reality somewhere but the mahavata philosophy is saying they don't exist anywhere that is the difference okay so it is therefore not applicable that's what i said an example of the first is a mirage the mirage an example of the second is a classic instance of a rope taken for a snake okay the difference between the two is clear na huh? in the second one the rope and the snake both exist you are mistaking one for the other in the other one there is no trees and there is no oasis but you are seeing it there but the oasis exists somewhere that's why you are being able to picture it in your mind there is a small difference between the two in passing we may note that there are many things called hallucinations which are not really that but symbol images sent up from the subliminal or experiences in which the subliminal consciousness or sense comes to the surface and puts us in contact with supra physical realities a very good example of this is when the yogi sees visions and the visions can be seen either in sleep any time when you are meditating images come to you okay they many people are referring during the meditation they see uh, images and they ask sir no for an explanation so it is a subtle image which has a reality which is image to you but it's not your hallucination you are actually seeing this image but the image is not the reality in your mind if you are seeing in the vision a lotus 
a lotus exists somewhere, but not what you, you are not seeing the actual lotus. So that's what Sandhya is saying. Okay, it's in the mind. You may note that there are many things called hallucinations, which are not really that, but symbol images sent up from the subliminal or experiences which the subliminal consciousness or sense comes to the surface and puts us in contact with supra-physical realities. Suddenly an idea has come into my head and I'll share it with you. There was this Saint Bernadette, okay? She was there in France and she was uh, a very young girl and she saw in a grotto the Mother Mary. Mother Mary she saw, but nobody believed her. So, oh, there is no Mother Mary in the grotto, but she is seeing the subtle presence and nobody believed her. So, this is one time. It's not a hallucination at all. It's a reality. Later on, <coughs> Mother Mary is not there in a physical form in the grotto. Okay. But, reality is a subtle reality, which is an image. So, this is the hallucination. It's a fact, but it's a... Um, what can you call it? It's an image fact. Wife <laughs> and you, okay? That's the thing. Very famous now, that place. Huh? Saint, Saint Bernadette saw that. It's called uh, Lourdes in France. I don't know if Yasmin has gone to France and seen Lourdes. Have you, Yasmin? <laughs> no, I haven't been to Lourdes, but I've heard a lot about it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Every day in the evening, they take out a big procession and people are even taken in their surgical beds in that procession. Yes, yes. And then uh, there is some little bath and you have to strip yourself of all clothes and take a dip in that ice cold water. That's right. And it but is uh, Jeras, Jeras has been to Lutz on a tour. Okay. And uh, for my secretary, who is a Catholic, he had got that water from Lutz for her. Huh? Yeah, it's supposed to be curative water. Many yes. people pure. Yes. Yeah. And so people, people, you know, who are sick all over the world, uh, go to Lutz. That's right. Yeah, they all go to Lutz. And it's not a hallucination, it really works. Probably because there is water in many places where there is all sorts of minerals are there, sulfur water, this, that, and they have purity powers, okay? I remember I went to Orissa and there was a, um, a hot water spring coming perennially. It's the sulfurous and people are, uh, they take a bath there and many of their problems, physical problems disappear after that. So, loot is something which people believe in and it works. So, this is a, Exactly what Srinidhi is talking about. We may note that there are many things called hallucinations, which are not really that, but symbol images. Saint Bernadette, that young girl, she did not see physically the Divine Mother, okay? the Mother Mary, but she did see an image of Mother Mary. And that is a reality, it's a certain reality. So that cannot be called a hallucination. That's what he's saying. Okay? Example of this, we have read that. So now I go to the next sentence. Okay, so um, not really symbol, which comes and puts us in contact with supra physical reality. Not the word supra physical. There are physical realities, but there are also subtle realities, and there are absolutely the highest supra physical realities which are not solid, but they are realities. Thus, the cosmic consciousness, which is our entry by breaking down of our mental limitations into the sense of a vast reality, has been classed, even while admitting it, as a hallucination. <laughs> so this is very interesting what he's saying. There are two examples. This is because in the West, okay, there was a Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman had the uh, experience of the cosmic consciousness and he tried what is called prose poetry. Sri Ramdha gives him very high praise and but the poetry itself is not very successful, Sri Ramdha says. But he was 
he was in the cosmic consciousness and his very close friend also had the cosmic consciousness for a very short time but they believe what they are saying but they still feel there is a hallucination what is it so admitting as a hallucination but taking only the common hallucination mental or visual we observe that it seems to be at first sight example of what is called imposition on the philosophic theory in the philosophic theory so <coughs> what philosophic theory of mayavada philosophic theory is referring to mayavada and we can just to explain this imposition the self the self is like a, a cinema screen okay but the cinema screen is not rectangular and with a fixed border the borders have disappeared and the screen is infinite and it is so so featureless that it is not even white but it is absolutely real now when you throw an image from your projector on to the screen that's an imposition so the what you are seeing the physical world is an imposition on your consciousness your consciousness is the screen which is actually the self and the images that you are seeing in the physical world is impressed upon and you believe that they are real and when you switch off the projector which means that you make a mind silent then you see only the screen but remember the screen is featureless infinite eternal immutable you can't describe it but it is absolutely real so this is the this is an imposition that's a mayavada is mayavada is saying that the world what you are seeing is only an imposition of false images on your mind okay this is what imposition then there is another thing which he has discussed elsewhere i don't remember if he discussed it here in this class but he says there are two types one is an impression and the other is an imposition so the impression is different from the imposition the imposition the projector is throwing an image on the screen and when the projector is switched off the screen is back to its original place there is no image anymore it's an imposition but if that image is etched on to the uh, in on to the um, the screen then it's a impression it lasts okay so that is normally our condition the world is impressed upon our and we feel that it is permanently there so that's a different between imposition and impression okay we go to the next one it is a placement of an un he is describing what the mayavada philosophy is it is the placement of an unreal figure of things on a reality of a mirage upon the bare desert air of the figure of a non present snake on the present and real rope the world we may contend is such a hallucination you can say that what you are seeing is not absolute unreal but you are misinterpreting like the rope and the snake more uh, more apt the image of the snake and the rope the world we may contend we may contend it could be said it can be um, affirmed that the world is such a hallucination and what is it? an imposition of a non existent unreal figure of things on the bare ever present soul reality of the brahman okay but then we note that in each case the hallucination the false image is not of something quite non existent it's an image of something existent and real but not present in the place on which it has been imposed by the mind's error or by sense error mind's error sense error and the two types of hallucinations he has discussed so it's very clear the mayavada philosophy is insisting that the world is really non there is nowhere anything you are seeing a tree it doesn't exist anywhere you are seeing a crow flying it doesn't exist anywhere that's what mayavada philosophy is saying but then it is not true because the hallucination image is saying you are seeing something which exists elsewhere so the 
image of the the example of the hallucination is not valid. That's what Swengi is saying. Note that in each case, the hallucination, the false image, is not of something quite non-existent. What you are seeing that exists somewhere else, but you are seeing it where it is not. It's an image of something existent and real, but not present in the place on which it has been imposed by the mind's error or by a sense error. This does exist somewhere else, but not where you are seeing it to be. That's it. What he said. So, I read the next sentence. A mirage, a mirage. You can say anything. Mirage is a French word, but I think in English they say mirage. Mirage is the image of a city, an oasis, running water, or of some other absent things. Normally they say it's like an oasis. The trees are there. And the false image of them, whether raised up by the mind or reflected in the desert air, would not be there to delude the mind with a false sense of reality. The snake exists, and its existence and form are known to the victim of the momentary hallucination. If it had not been so, the delusion would not have been created. You know that the snake exists and a rope exists. You are only mistaking between the two. That's a one thing. Even in the case of the desert, the oasis does exist somewhere, but you are imagining it to be there. Now the question arises: Can we think of anything that is really non-existent anywhere in the universe? I think it's very doubtful. <laughs> in other words, whatever we imagine does exist somewhere. I think the mind is incapable of thinking of something which does not exist anywhere. In fact, non-existence is not there anywhere, na? No? It's only a concept. The non-existent is not there anywhere. <laughs> Everything is a reality, right from the highest level to the lowest level. So, this is the, you are seeing something which you are your image, your senses, or your mind is deceiving you. Snake exists, and its existence and form are known to be uh, known to the victim of a momentary hallucination. If it had not been so, the delusion would not have been created. For it's a form resemblance of the seen reality to another reality previously known elsewhere. That is the origin of the error. The analogy, therefore, is unhelpful. It is valid only. If our image of the universe were a falsity, reflecting a true universe which is not here but elsewhere, or else if it were a false imaged manifestation of the reality, replacing in the mind or covering with its distorted resemblance a true manifestation. In other words, the world is real, but you are not seeing what it is. That's what Sandro's uh, theory is. But the Mayavada theory, in its extreme form, huh? by the way, only in the extreme form, says that you are seeing something which doesn't exist anywhere. That's not true. There is a reality in the physical world, but you are not seeing it. The senses are not giving you a correct picture. That is more like. But here, the world is a non-existent form of things, an illusory construction. Imposed on the bare real, not the word bare reality. That means bare reality without any features, absolutely bare, like the screen, the white screen. But even the whiteness is a, not bare. It's got a, uh, a feature. It's absolutely without any uh, feature at all. On the soul existent. Now, what is the soul existent? The Brahman consciousness. That's the only thing. Is forever. Empty of things, not that empty of things and formless. Again, we can say featureless. Okay, <laughs> featureless. There would be a true analogy only if our vision constructed in the void air of the desert a figure of things that exist nowhere. That would be the corresponding to the Mayavada philosophy, but that is not so. So the Mayavada philosophy is not to be. Uh, taken in its absolute sense, it is not true. Okay. 
There is a reality, but you are not seeing the reality. That is the fact. So, it would be a true analogy only if the vision, if our vision, constructed in the void air of the desert, a figure of things that existed nowhere, or else, if it is, if it imposed on a bare ground, both rope and snake and other figures that equally existed nowhere. Unfortunately, <laughs> rope also exists and snake also exists. So therefore, the analogy is not clear. So, he has discussed dream and he says the analogy is not applicable and he is also discussed the hallucination of the desert and the snake and the rope. That also is not absolutely applicable. Mahavata theory says you are seeing something that exists nowhere. That's the thing. Now we can read the next one. It is clear. Okay. Shall I read? Yes, please. Yes, yes ma'am. Read. It is clear. It is clear that in this analogy, two quite different kinds of illusion, not illustrative of each other, are mistakenly out together as if they were identical in nature. All mental or sense hallucinations are really misinterpretations or misplacements or impossible combinations of false developments of things that are in themselves existent or possible or in some way within or allied in the province of the real. All mental errors and illusions are the result of an ignorance which miscombines its data or proceeds falsely upon a previous or present or possible content of knowledge. But the cosmic illusion has no basis of actuality. It is an original and all originating illusion. It imposes names, figures, happenings that are pure inventions on a reality in which there never were and never will be any happenings, names or figures. The analogy of mental hallucination would only be applicable if we admit a Brahman without names, form or relations and a world of names, forms and relations as equal realities imposed one upon the other. The rope in place of the snake or the snake in place of the rope an attribution. It might be of the activities of the Saguna to the coincidence of the Nirguna. But if both are real, both must be either separate aspects of the reality or coordinate aspects, positive and negative poles of one existence. Any error or confusion of mind between them would not be a creative cosmic illusion but only a wrong perception of realities, a wrong relation created by the ignorance. Exactly what we discussed, we are only elaborating. The Mayavada theory is saying that the Brahman is the only reality. There is no such thing as the physical world. It exists nowhere. All the things that you are seeing, stones, trees, animals, even human forms, they don't exist anywhere at all. So this is the Mayavada theory, which is dismissing. Okay, but he says that the images would be valid, would be valid if the world is absolutely real, with without features, and the world is also absolutely real with features, and you are mistaking the one for the other. Okay, you are thinking that these are <coughs> the images which are there are non-existent then it would be the Mayavada theory would be valid. But the Mayavada theory is not valid because the world is real, but you are not seeing the reality. Instead of seeing a cat, you are seeing a, a dog. That is what you are saying. So it's a misrepresentation of the sense and of the mind. So this, that's why he goes on to the next one. What is the nature of reality and what is the nature of Knowledge is the knowledge that we get through the senses, correct or not. So he has divided them into reality. He has discussed the first book one 
and book two has two parts part one part two so the part two book two is the evolution he discussed but now in this what we are seeing now book two part one he is discussing the reality what is the nature of the reality it depends upon the instruments you are using okay those different instruments the senses are and therefore you are not seeing the world for what it is but the senses are not giving you a picture of something that doesn't exist anywhere that's not true okay that's what he is discussed so at the time 27 is uh, a very good uh, so we can uh, go we can read it okay i'm reading each sentence we have discussed just exactly what we discussed he is saying again it is clear that in this analogy analogy of what the <coughs> desert and the snake and the rope two quite different kinds of illusion not illustrative of each other are mistakenly put together as if they were identical in nature okay the difference is very clear in the first case the rope exists and the snake exists but you are mistaking one for the other in the other one in the oasis the oasis is not existing in the like the rope and the snake it is unlike the rope and the snake you are imagining something which is not there it is there somewhere else but not here what you are seeing that's a difference and they are clubbed together that's what i am saying because shankara gives all these images <coughs> but i think the probably there is no confusion in shankara's mind but the interpretations of shankara were often quite wrong <coughs> as they were saying that the two are different are really miss all mental or sense hallucinations are really misrepresentations not misinterpretation misrepresentations or misplacements of impossible combinations or false developments of things that are in themselves existent or possible or in some way within or allied to the province of the real but we just you imagine something that doesn't exist anywhere if you say that yes i can i can think of a mermaid and a mermaid does not exist anywhere i can think of a flying tiger he does not exist anywhere the answer to that is very simple flying exists and tiger exists <laughs> a woman exists and a fish exists so it's a combination that's what i'm saying okay he's saying impossible combinations you see he has taken that also into account so he is telling you three things first of all you can see misrepresentation in other words there is a cat sitting there but you take it for the a tiger or a dog that's a misrepresentation misplacement you are mistaking the rope for the snake impossible combination flying tiger and <laughs> woman that looks like a fish what is that what is the name? you call that uh, just now use the word i forgot <laughs> the mermaid 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 <laughs> see that's how my mind is playing tricks with me <laughs> so that's right so these are impossible combinations so look very carefully very interesting Sir, when you are using a word, you have to understand exactly what he is saying. Misrepresentation, the, the snake and the rope, na? Very clear. Misrepresentation. You are both exist. So, mis misplacement. You are placing the oasis in a place where it is not there at all. So it's a misplacement. And the impossible combination. again who is it a flying tiger or a mermaid he is taking all he is so careful he is including all types of hallucinations or false development of things that are in themselves existent or possible or in some way within or allied to the province of the real this is a very big phrase are in themselves existent or possible or in some way within or allied to the province of the real is a flying tiger or a mermaid so that also he has included 
all mental errors. Actually, science fiction. Okay, science fiction is exactly that. It's in them. Existing somewhere, or possible in some way, within or related to the province of the real. All science fiction are like that. <laughs> they are thinking of impossible things, but they do exist somewhere. The, uh, the Superman, the Spider Man, <laughs> so all these are it. This what simply describes. All mental errors and illusions are the result of an ignorance. So now, this is the problem. So what is the nature of knowledge? Ignorance. There are two things in philosophy which are of great concern to all philosophers. One is the what is called epistemology. Epistemology is the thinking, uh, the uh, study of the nature of knowledge. How are we getting knowledge? What is the way? So that's one. And ontology is what is the nature of the reality that you are seeing. Okay. What is reality? Reality that is ontology. So this is what Sam is discussing here. The two types of things which we seek. So the problem is not existence and non-existence, but a misrepresentation, ignorance. We are not seeing things in the correct way. That's why he picks up what is the origin of ignorance. What is the cure for ignorance? That is again discussed in great detail, book two. Okay, that's what we are reading now. So this is the discussion of the reality and the knowledge that comes from reality. Ignorance is the problem, not unreality. That's a problem. So, but the cosmic illusion has no basis of actuality as it's an original and all originating illusion. Something that does not exist at all, the Mahavada is saying it exists. It is things that are pure inventions on a reality in which never were and never will be any happenings, names or figures. The analogy of mental hallucination would only be applicable if we admit a Brahman without names, forms, and relations, that means featureless. So the Brahman is the absolute reality. And a world of names, forms, and relations as equal realities imposed one upon the other, the rope in place of the snake. So if that were there, then the Mayavada philosophy would be right. But when the Mayavada philosophy says that the world doesn't exist at all, it is wrong. That's what this is said. Mayavada interpreted correctly would be, you are not seeing what is really there. You are seeing something else than what exists. But the existence of the world is real. It's not unreal. The analogy of mental hallucination would only be applicable if we admit a Brahman without names, forms and relations. That's the featureless Brahman. And a world of names, forms and relations as equal realities imposed one upon the other <laughs> a rope in place of a snake or the snake in place of the rope. It doesn't matter how you think. An attribute might be of the activities of the saguna on the quiescence of the nirguna. So the saguna is the world of all forms and the nirguna is the absence of all forms and you are imposing one on the other. If Mayavada said that, that would be absolutely correct. But the Mayavada is saying the nirguna is a reality and the saguna does not exist anywhere. So that is wrong and so is not accepting that. Okay. But if both are real, both must be either separate aspects of the reality or coordinate aspects, positive and negative poles of the one existence. They are real, but they are different. Like, again, we can give the example of the water. Solid water is ice and gaseous water is water vapor. And yet they are the same. Okay, both are real. You should not mistake one for the other. That's what he's saying. Error or confusion of mind between them 
could not be a creative cosmic illusion, only a wrong perception of reality, a wrong relation created by the ignorance. So the problem is not reality and unreality, but your ignorance. You are not seeing the reality. You are seeing the reality through your senses, which are inadequate instruments. That's the problem. You have the problem? Don't see through your senses. See beyond the senses. Then you start seeing the reality. And then there also there is a graded, graded uh, sequence. That's what we're going to see. So, 8.37. We have crossed. So, so clear Swayam has explained how the Mayavadic philosophy is not applicable if he thinks that the world is total unreality. It is not total unreality. It's a reality which you are not seeing in the correct way. That's the problem. So, he explains in great detail the origin of ignorance. So where is it coming? And he will tell you later on in Life Divine that the problem is coming from the sense of separation, the one becoming the many, that is the problem. The origin of ignorance is starting at that level. The moment the one becomes the many, you have a problem. The sea is one, but it is creating waves. And each wave is now limiting itself and forgetting that it is part of the sea, that is the problem. Each wave has to think that it is part of the oneness. Each individual has to know that it is part of the whole. That is the beginning of knowledge. Okay? Up here today, I hope it was clear. The discussion is a very interesting one. And we can, so, some key, note down, page, and if we scrutinize other illustrations. Okay, the other yes. Yeah. Do that, and we'll discuss what the other illustrations are next time. Okay, everybody have a nice day. The first Thank you, Lankada. Good morning. Thank you, Lankada. Okay, good morning. Best wishes.